Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from Vancouver, BC. And today I have the privilege to interview Kevin Grossman from Santa Cruz, California. Hi, Kevin. How are you doing? Hi, Meher. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Sure. So currently, Kevin is, the board, is a talent board president and a board member responsible for the Candidate Experience Awards worldwide. Yes. Founded in 2011, so 10 years, congratulations. And it is a nonprofit research organization focused on the elevation and promotion of quality candidate experience with industry benchmarks that highlights accountability, fairness, and business impact. Yes. So Kevin, my first question is, yeah. we know that the candidate experience starts from the time the candidate presses apply button till they got hired, promoted, and even the exit. That's the whole is the candidate experience. So, I mean, before they get hired, so, so they apply, they get hired, onboarding, and then they move to the employee experience. So at the beginning, the candidate experience. So why it's important and did that change due to COVID uh, times? It did. And let me, let me tell you about that because pre-COVID mm -hmm. in, in the nine years previous that we've been measuring candidate mm -hmm. experience, it was nothing but a growth market, not just in the States, but I would argue globally, yeah. lowest unemployment in decades and then the pandemic hit and pre-COVID there was over the years that what I would call a modest improvement in, in the positive candidate experience, at least in the data that we have. Uh, um, but there was virtually an increase in what we call candidate resentment. So mm -hmm. one of the things we measure is uh, the candidate's willingness to do something again with an employer, apply for a job, refer other people, and potentially buy uh, purchase things if it's a consumer based business. Now that's not going to be the case for B2B companies. Yeah. But if it's a, and just having brand affinity, willing to associate with the brand, th those are things that they choose to do or not to do based on their experience. Whether they're an external candidate or whether they're an internal employee that is having, you know, that might be seeing some, they may want to leave the organization or what does it take to keep them there? Or they want another opportunity inside the organization. So resentment was actually increasing. So the, the willingness to not do stuff again with the company based on their, their experience going through the, the job process, the recruiting and hiring process. And we know that most job candidates for any job don't get hired. That's just the reality. You run the numbers. That's the way it works out all the time. Even, even if the application ratios vary, most people don't get hired. So resentment was climbing until the pandemic hit. And then everything changed, right? Nobody, who plans for a pandemic? And yeah. then, so what we found was that companies were much more transparent, forced to be much more transparent yeah. and engaged in empathetic communication with candidates as well as with their own employees because everything was changing yeah, yeah we don't know what we can do we can't hire now um we're trying to keep the business alive moving forward companies big and small across industries some industries fared better than others as we know and some industries were wiped out yeah for now and although things are starting to kind of come back now which is exciting so what we saw was was the the, the positive candidate experience actually increased in last year and resentment decreased mm -hmm. um, because of those things. And because I think, you know, candidates were in a different position all overall. I guess, again, it's going to vary by job type, but candidates had to, in a, in a sense, be more flexible and forgiving because everybody was freezing hires. For being, people were being furloughed, laid off, just crazy time. And not just, I mean, it's not just the impact of COVID. 19, it was also the impact of social and racial inequity and injustice, right? So all the protests from last summer, organizations really being held to task, are you truly doing something to make this world a better place? Yeah. Um, are do you truly, you know, are you really investing in your diversity and inclusion initiatives? So all of those things impacted it. What's interesting is that 
what we're seeing now and we're and we're still we're not done collecting data for this year so later in the fall we'll start sharing our results mm -hmm. the positive experience is kind of holding steady so far mm -hmm. like it did last year but resentment starting to grow again mm -hmm. probably you know because it's you know there's a lot of there's so many things that and we'll talk about in, in this discussion that are now changing even more so than last year, even though we're starting to open up and more people are vaccinated and economies are opening up. But that's what we saw. Yeah. And do you think that all the lessons learned during COVID time, either positive or negative, will continue after we become back to normal or some things will be left behind? Wow, I wish I could say that we would will con would continue down this path of of just greater transparency and and, and empathetic communication and yeah. feedback. I, I don't know. I think I think some I think some companies probably will fall back into pre COVID behavior. Um, but but I would argue that they're also going to be the ones that potentially are going to lose lose out on people mm -hmm. because not only not just about attracting new people. Uh, I mean, even here's the thing, mm -hmm. regardless of what the world looks like, we we all choose things that we're interested in. Right. I mean, if, if there's a company known to have a toxic environment and it's, you know, in the mainstream media and it's talked about all the time. I still might be somebody who wants to work for that brand, mm -hmm. no matter what is said about it, right? Yeah. Uh, and it might be something, you know, a high, uh, a high aggressive um, workplace. I may want to be in that. Mm -hmm. But that said, I think that if if there are now, I mean, there's a lot of people that left the workforce yes. last year. A lot of women who had to leave the workforce to go back and help take care of families. Um, there are people now who who had been working remotely. Mm -hmm. or in some combination of that yeah. now that are being told well you know you have to come back mm -hmm. to the office and they're and the people are saying i'm okay. not coming back yeah i'm gonna go i have i have an opportunity over other here. options yes i have other options now right because now we're companies and it's pretty well documented in in the in the news right now i mean com companies are struggling to hire they're ramping up fast yes they can't get enough recruiters to help them i mean i'm talking about companies of, of, of certain hiring scale too right and volume but they uh they're struggling and not just for across different job types but it's about including the hourly worker too hourly workers across different you know whether it's in the store and the plant in the, the whatever hospitality i mean they're they're struggling to hire them for a variety of different reasons too yeah. so we've never been and i've been talking to a lot of ta recruiting and hr leaders and their and some of their teams in our community people who've been recruiting for over 20 years have not seen this before yeah yeah this world that we're in yeah. of, of the struggle so i think to, to answer to finish answering your question if Companies continue to be, again, be transparent, communicate constantly, be clear about what's going on, expectation setting, asking for feedback, providing feedback, things that we see in our data and research every year. I think they will fare better than those that go back to that pre-COVID, you know, it's my way or the highway yeah. kind, of, kind of a thing, so. Thank you for those great insights, Kevin. I really appreciate it. So for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Kevin a couple of questions and I'm going to post them on a daily basis. So you'll be with us on a journey. You can like and share the videos, comment. So tune in next time for another great question with Kevin.